Darren, I, it's a Tonic Studios. Uh, well, last time we spoke, we were virtually connected, so this is the first time we've actually physically met. Yeah, it looked different in real life, apparently. So. Yeah, well, you're taller. I'm having to, <laughs> I'm having to hold up quite a lot of stuff here. It's six at three, I've got the heels on. Excellent. So uh, what's going on in this, this stand here? You've got a lot of things going on, right? Yeah, well, we're very fortunate. Ableton kind of said, we'd like you to take over our stand for Synthfest. Um, and as you know, we, we specialise very much in extending Ableton Live, especially through Max for Live. So I basically put a Facebook post together with uh, the guys that are in the collective, uh, which today I've met for the first time in real life, because it's a pretty virtual thing that we do sitting on our computers at home. Uh, what we've done is we've basically got four installations across the table, showing off the different ways that Max for Live can extend Ableton Live. Um, we've gone for Phelan, Phelan Kane, who you well know. Yeah, uh, master of wave junction. Absolutely, awesome. Available so now. So we're, we're, <laughs> we're demonstrating here his synth, and people have been getting really hands-on and excited with that. It's all in the headphones, so we're not going to be demonstrating that. Next, something that, obviously at Synthfest, which uh, I think should have the tagline, picnic tables and patch cables. It feels really homegrown, yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's so many passionate people here. James is one of those, and he's actually brought his, uh, I think it's a Eurorack synthesizer with the modular patch cables. Oh, can we go and have a look? Oh yeah, God, yeah. Uh, in fact, should we, should we hand over to James? He, he can talk you through exactly what's happening here. Oh yeah. We're actually debuting a, a set of devices called the Modular Series CV. We haven't released these yet, but we thought we'd get James here and it might make him actually finish the project. <laughs> I'll hand you over to James. Hello, James. Hello, nice to meet you. So, uh, before you get back to coding, perhaps you could show us a little bit more of what's going on. Cool. So, yeah, it's quite simple stuff. Uh, it's very simple in Max to program the basics to generate CV. And working for many years with Ableton, finally got into hardware, work in a little modular shop called Elevator Sound in Bristol, started getting into it and wanted to integrate the two worlds. So, with some um, simple Max for Live programming, it's pretty easy to make devices. For instance, here we've got the push, uh, sending out one volt per octave and gate. That's controlling our make noise O coast here. It's also sending out a clock. So we're clocking the LFO here. Right. And you can also just generate some extra LFO patterns. So with a few simple modular devices here, we're making some nice LFO shapes that are again LFOing and controlling right, some so, of the so parameters. These are just Max for Live devices that you created. So very simply, and the idea is rather than making something very large, maybe convoluted or quite complex, they're quite simple and they're small modules in themselves. So just on this very simple example, we've got a simple LFO, a utility which can scale and curve things, a little random noise, sample and hold, a smoother, an oscilloscope on the end, or a little lookup function as well, where you can draw in and scale values. Um, so it's a bit like a modular itself. You just chain them together to make more advanced combinations for designing automation. Uh, is there inter-app inter routing between them then, or do they just run in series? It's literally just uh, audio. So it's just passing an audio signal down the line. So interestingly, you can actually chuck in some of Ableton's own effects. Why not try chucking a delay on the channel and see what happens when you delay CV? You can similarly route CV maybe from a maths or the OCOS. So we could actually use the LFO generated by uh, our O-Coast here and control parameters in live, or record them as audio clips, and then play those audio clips back out at other parameters. Right, so you need a DC coupled audio interface for that, right? So you can use Motu or other interfaces that have DC coupled. I'm a big fan of all of Oz's expert sleepers stuff, so I do have a ridiculous amount of expert sleepers goods which Plenty allows me, there, right? so it allows me to get at least 16 channels out and 12 channels back in, all over one audio cable, uh, one USB cable, right. and I'm sure you'll be chatting to us later. But yeah, his or, setup really helps done, out. Already done, actually. But yeah, all of the individual effects as well, they're on individual send and returns in Ableton, so I can send the O coast or any of the drum modules out to individual valve or clouds or all of the classic effects, uh, freely route between them. Send out LFOs it's interesting, to isn't it, that in fact what you're doing is using the computer to almost get rid of a bunch of patch cables, right? Yes, so in my rack I've managed to keep it very small. I don't have any sequences, I don't have any LFOs, I don't have any envelopes 
it's purely just a load of nice effects and some drums. And Ableton, uh, with the help of the expert sleepers, is actually doing all the all the hard work in a way. So is this what you'd use live yourself? Yep. Yeah, this is my live setup for performance uh, when I do solo stuff or when I work with other musicians. Flexible and quite good fun. And these are going to be available uh, sometime as soon, As soon right? as they're finished. <laughs> yeah, I'll be over Ableton Loop with them as well, and then hopefully soon after that. Excellent, thank you very much. No worries. Pass you over Jeff. to someone else. Ah. Hello. Mr. Rush. Yes. Mr. Ned How's Rush. How's it going? It's going very well. Pleased <laughs> to see you. Uh, you? I, I've met Ned before because uh, you did uh, a, a gig and I played at. So you did, and you were very full, good. Full disclosure. <laughs> so um, what are you showing here, though? Because you, well, you do a load of kind of really interesting, kind of mangling and, and uh, very unusual stuff in Max for Live, right? Yeah, well, I'm just sort of relaxing here with some of our like visualizers that we make um, that are Max for Live run in Ableton that allow you to do um, you know, experimental visuals for your set inside Ableton. Um, I'm currently sort of using uh, three instances of, uh, actually two instances of the same device that are uh, kind of geometry, um, OpenGL geometry that's being displaced by audio. Um, Sounds quite scientific. Uh, sort of amplitude and a little bit of frequency. Um, and so when we started doing these, we only did one device and everyone came back and said, um, can we use more than one in a set? And we kind of went, ah, no, you can't. So we, we wanted to try and make something where you could just kind of pull in uh, as many like elements as you want. And so we kind of had to make this viewer window, uh, which is kind of where every each element kind of renders to this uh, context, this rendering window. So can you get that out into the outside world for like VJs and what have you? Yeah, that's it's oh. over there. Oh, okay. It's on I the screen. It's, a, it's, a, it's obviously, you know, looking a bit dim because of the lighting, but... Um, so that's yeah, just react. That's actually reacting from uh, Mark's setup here. So we've ra we've ran him into a, the mixer, and then I'm running the aux out into my sound card, which is just coming in on a regular track. So do you? But I mean, do you find there's a lot of call for it because people are kind of want to run their own uh, sort of uh, uh, audio visuals while they're performing live? Is that how it's? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can also like record the output uh, via uh, Siphon, which is like a third-party program you have to get. Um, inside the viewer, there's like a little Max object that will look out for the Siphon software, and you can do like a really high quality, like 1080p stream uh, of the audio and the sound, and also the, uh, the the visual into another VJ app like Resolume. So if you wanted to kind of, uh, if you're using Ableton and Resolume, and you wanted to have some audio reaction coming from Ableton, uh, you could do it that way. And also because it's Max for Live, it's really easy to uh, map everything to like uh, controllers and stuff like the push um, so yeah I mean it's 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 kind of uh, experimental it's um uh, it's we, we've also got quite a lot of other um, developers coming in like we wanted to it to be kind of like an environment where it would be very easy for other people to have their own input so if you want to like create your own if you know a little bit about jitter and do visuals in Max if you get the viewer window and you understand where the rendering context is, it's very easy to just start making your own uh, like visual Max devices, really, that will run in Ableton, so. Right. Yeah. Excellent, and they can buy all your stuff from Isotonic Studios, right? This is all out now, yeah, it's all good to go, yeah, so. Thank you very much. I also Who's next? you over to Mark now. Mark? Yes. So, sir. Hello. I've heard a lot about your sequencer. Let's have a look at it. Okay. Uh, so this is the arcade pack. So we've got two packs out. Uh, that one there is actually the free okay. Ghost LE. That's a free sequence that you're seeing now. So you can grab that for free from the Isotonic so website. So what's that doing? Because it looks very much like a game of Pac-Man. Yeah, that's made. what it was inspired by. So you've, you've got the classic Pac-Man maze. Uh, and there's no Pac-Man, it's just the ghosts. It's called Ghosts. And you basically can set parameters for the ghosts, like how fast they run, their velocity, uh, what kind of octave they're working in. And as they move around the maze, they're triggering notes. So it's like a generative sequencer that you can loop each go, so you can get like loop, uh, sub-looping elements to it as well. So it can be quite random or it can be quite contained within like a bar or two bars. So you just get it running and they go off and then? Yeah, they can either run randomly like the real game or you can set loops up. Is that what we're hearing out of this speaker? Could you? Uh, we're hearing a mixture. So what we've also got is the, art, the full arcade pack. Uh, which there's four devices and they, they take over different control surfaces like push, 
launch pad and machine jam. So what we're seeing on this track here is Space Invaders. That's the device for it. And then we also have it running on the control surface as well. Uh, and this is like a rhythm sequencer. So we get eight independent sequencers running and the Space Invaders move from left to right. So you get these interesting rotating patterns that occur every now and again. Again, options to make it quite structured or a bit more random if you want to. Uh, we have Frogger on here. So this is a eight step gate sequencer. So if I turn this up, and this is driving the Dave Smith Tetra as well. So we can do pitch here, uh, gate length here. And then things like octave and accents and skip there as well. So these all run on all different control surfaces. Uh, we also have Arkanoid. If I turn Arkanoid up. So in this one, we have these kind of shapes bouncing around. And you can choose where there's an active step. You can have up to four of these running at the same time. And again, they're all just aimed at coming up with interesting melodic content uh, that maybe you wouldn't if you just sat in front of the keyboard. Um, and again, you can loop sections, you can convert them into clips really easily. So it's just like some tools to kind of get the creative juices flowing. And are you are you accessing at the sort of API level the the Launchpad graphics? Yeah, and the, yeah. And it's the, all the, using the API for push and Launchpad and Machine Jam. Yeah. Right, so you get access, you can get the LEDs to do whatever you Absolutely, want. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's the really fun thing about it, is being able to look at these controllers and say, I just want to build something completely unique that does what I want it to do. Here we go. Right. Yeah. And these are all available from Isotonic as well? All on the Isotonic website, yeah. And uh, what should people look for? What's, the, who's the, what's your developer name? Uh, it's just Mark Towers, and they're called the Arcade Series. Uh, there's, uh, there's two packs at the moment and a couple of free devices as well. Excellent. Right. It sounds like there should be a Facebook meme. It's like, what's your developer name? You yes. take the first letter <laughs> your first name. Yeah, I need to come up with that, yeah. Something arcade-based, probably, yeah. OK, thank you very much. Thanks. And so, of course, the uh, the final picture, piece of the puzzle is the uh, Metafunction developer, Mr. Phelan Kane. Hello, uh, Nick. How are you doing? I'm very well. Uh, Excellent. And, of course, you made Wave Junction, right? I have, absolutely. So our beloved Max for Live synth, which we can get from our Sonic State shop, and it's the affordable 19.99. So shameless plug there. Absolutely, but support the site, you know? Absolutely. Um, so super powerful. There's a lot you can do in it. Five LFOs, multi-wave oscillators, loads of different types of filter topology, three filters. Quite a powerful beast. Yeah, um, my, my, my huh? favourite, I think, is the diode filter. I really like the sound. Yeah. So what was that diode filter? Is that like 303? Yeah, the diode is a model of the TB303. Which is yeah. weird, because normally I would run a mile from anything 303, yeah. but it yeah. seems to sound really nice. It just sounds very... Yeah, it's, it's also the same diode sort of transistor model from the EMS as well. So they're a similar... I think it's a 3-pole 18 dB. So it's a nice complement to your transistor ladder from your Moog, you know. So what else have you got here? Are you just showing uh, Wave Junction? Or yeah, I've just got the Wave Junction with the Isotonic lads. I mean, they're good friends of mine. Obviously, I'm an Ableton certified trainer as well, so showing off maybe some interesting integration with push um, and other controllers and how you can really sort of extend live with a bit of max for live and reach out to the hardware world and stuff so i mean for us it's like hardware and software and a mixed hybrid workflow really so absolutely well thank you very much Felix. it's a pleasure thanks nick cheers bye